committee in November and the operating budget in January. The committee discussed the start of the budget 2022 process. This year, the city will use the Let's Connect platform or bang the table to engage as much of the community as possible with the budget process. Uh, some challenges for budget 20, uh, 2022 are the landfill, obviously, during the budget process, funding for the landfill closure liability and the future capital requirements of the landfill will be discussed. Johnson Bridge, again, funding for repair work for the Johnson Bridge. And as mentioned with uh, Let's Connect and Bang the Table, the, the uh, public is asked to, to engage in this for sure. And also with the uh, council participation, this is the opportunity for council to be involved in every step of the budget as, as we move forward. And presented there is a timeline of uh, when we're gonna go through everything right up to May, which is the five-year financial plan bylaw and tax rate uh, bylaw. There's an update there from Capital that you can take a peek at. Uh, just the basics of uh, getting all the cash in and topping up uh, the reserves, taking a look at those. The COVID funds update, Cornell received $2,503,000 um, for the, uh, COVID, and there's a list of everything that was, that has been spent so far. Um, and the net remaining funds are $198,500. The council funds update, uh, the balance at the end of 2020 was 91,362. Uh, the budget for 2021 was 75,000 with the total available being 166,362. And there's a list of all of those projects as well with every penny committed. And then we've just got a list of the meetings that were held and we voted in that. And the recommendation, recommendation coming forward from FSAC and move uh, Mayor Simpson and Secretary and Councilor Gullia and resolved that the Financial Sustainability and Audit Committee recommend to Council that the 2021-22 meeting schedule for the Financial Sustainability and Audit Committee um, be seen there. And that was carried unanimously and I would move that, Mr. Mayor. Seconder, Councilor Gullia. Any questions or comments on the meeting schedule? All those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Questions or comments for the report itself? Councilor Paul. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with regard to the committee discussion on the need to review the business license fees in light of um, bylaw and fire inspection, I have a question, and that is, um, why would that increase, or, or why would that be charged to the business license and not to under commercial taxation? I'm of the opinion that a business license uh, should be regulatory uh, rather than re, uh, observed as a, as a tax generator. And also, just to strengthen that argument, uh, on page 18 of 95, the director does not include uh, tax generation as uh, one of the uh, reasons for a business license bylaw. Yeah, so I'd, I'd ask Director Bolton to speak to it. There is a yin and a yang here. Well, first so. of all, it's not tax collection, it's fee recovery, cost recovery. So that's what we're looking at, and that's how a lot of councils have always looked at business licenses, is covering the cost of those businesses. So the cost of bylaw, having to go and check on those businesses and follow up on business licensing and all that sort of thing. And the fact that all those businesses do require a fire inspection. It is, of course, council's choice how they fund it, and that'll be council's discussion next year. Yep. So if I could, Councilor uh, Paul, we've got the actual city staff report <laughs> coming up, right? Yeah. So we're not on the city staff report, we're on just the report of FSAC. Okay. So you may want to just wait till we get to, into the actual city staff report, okay? Yeah. I'm not shutting off the debate, it's just we, we have the substantive part of it in that staff report, so. Any other questions or comments on Councilor Elliott's report? Okay, so we'll move on then to the executive committee chair summary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this report's pertaining to the executive meeting on October 13th. 
two topics uh, to discuss. Uh, first, uh, we heard from Manager Reed, and she informed Executive about aspects of our new tourism website, which will soon enable the featuring of hotel, restaurant, and experience listings. As the city cannot promote one business over another, um, being featured as a listing or as part of an itinerary will require a business to pay. Um, the yearly stru fee structure will be comparable to what existed with the Quinell Visitor Guide, and of course, we don't have a visitor guide. Um, so the website is meant to replace that. Um, so as part of uh, the fee that one would pay, uh, you would benefit from uh, the creation of a feature listing, inclusion in seasonal itineraries. You'd uh, benefit from two boosted executive, uh, exclusive business posts in 2022 on the Explore Quinell Facebook and Instagram channels. So to uh, even go over the top there, uh, additionally, businesses will also be able to add on to the basic program to be included in social media ad campaigns and a seasonal tourism newsletter. Um, businesses signed up for the core program may uh, be able to take advantage of in-kind contributions and be featured in seasonal weekend getaway contests. So if you make a contribution to the contest, then you'd have an opportunity to be part of that. Uh, the initiative will be available to eligible businesses, including accommodations, food and beverage establishments, guides and outfitters, and visitor experience providers. Uh, revenue generated by this initiative will cover off the marketing expenses, expenses such as ad costs, staff time, photography, and other assets that promote tourism. Uh, next, we discussed, uh, uh, we were brought up today by Director Bolton on community engagement. And she gave us some statistics on the new Let's Connect engagement uh, platform that we have uh, uh, that launched uh, not long ago. As of October 13th, we've had 470 registrations and 295 surveys completed. And that's just over a week when this report was written. It's been a little longer now, so I suspect this data is already out of date. We're over 500. Fantastic. Um, so, uh, Director Bolton also advised that video content is in the works to further enhance the Let's Connect platform, and absolutely, um, Executive and Council, I'm sure, is very excited with the response to this platform and the positive impact it's having on engagement in the community. And uh, there were no recommendations, so that's the end of my report. Thank you. Questions or comments for Councillor Vic? Count, Councilor Runge. Thank you. Just a question with regards to the Tourism Cooperative Marketing uh, Initiative, which is, sounds wonderful. How do businesses, uh, who do businesses contact? Well, I, I would assume uh, Manager Reed has her team and they're, um, I guess if, if you are participating in the actual visitor guide, you'd be on the list to call right from, from that list that we had from the visitor guide. But uh, that's a good question. I assume there'll be outreach from that department. Director Bowen. I know they were working on marketing materials that they would be getting out to all the businesses so they'd know who to contact. Yeah, I think the contact person will be in the marketing materials. I'm not sure if it's Jennifer directly or uh, whether it's uh, to manager Reed. Okay, any other questions or comments? Um, Councilor Paul? Sorry, I don't know if this is uh, the right time to ask this question, but I, I noticed that the $23,595 is that's allocated, pardon me, yeah, $23,595 allocated for the residential school memorial project. Can I ask a question relative to that at this point? That's not in, this it's not in the report in front of you. We're, we've moved on to the executive oh, committee sorry. report. Okay. I'll hold that thought. It's in the addition. Yeah. Yeah, so you can ask me that question or staff that question at any time. Um, so. But you've missed it. You yeah. missed it as that's fine for tonight's agenda. Um, one comment, uh, Director Bolton, just with respect to the participation, the updated numbers on the participation for community engagement. Do you have the breakout for Laborde Park and uh, the ADU? 
I do, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. But it's still pre predominantly to Laborde Park. Yeah, is that there was correct? about 80 of the ADUs, and the rest were okay. the park. Yeah. Okay, so so it's predominantly to Laborde Park. Uh, one of the things that it's triggered is we did sit down and have a very substantive meeting with Minor Ball uh, with respect to Rotary Ball Diamond, because of course that's part of the consultation uh, about the park, uh, and it was a very very uh, productive meeting. Uh, uh, Director Norman joined us, and I think the ball, uh, minor ball, really got a sense of what we're trying to do uh, with ball writ large, and that we have to ask the questions around Rotary Ball Diamond because it's part of Laborde Park consultation. So uh, I think it was an hour well spent with the group, and the feedback I got was that they were quite pleased with it. So, okay, any further questions or comments on that? Okay, moving on to our next uh, committee report, PAPCOM, uh, Councillor Runge. Thank you. Uh, this, is rep this report is to inform Council of what was discussed at the last Policy and Bylaw Committee meeting on October 8th. So t two articles, one was the Tree Policy and Bylaw for the City of Quinell, and we discussed, reviewed, and pri provided direction on the Tree Management Policy and the Bylaw with views of modernizing both. The tree management policy discussions and review on both policy and practice uh, revolved around criteria, direction, guidelines, and procedures to be used by the City of Quinell employees for the protection, maintenance, and removal of trees on city-owned lands. And there will be a recommendation uh, to follow. The second portion was the tree protection uh, bylaw number 1314, 1995. Discussions and recommended discussions, recommend, rec recommendations, and review occurred focusing on the limitations of the current bylaw, development permit considerations, and updating the objectives of the tree bylaw with a lens of incorporating both the fuel management and the climate change mitigation strategies. Recommendations also there will, uh, will follow. And then the second uh, thing that we s spoke about was the business regulation and licensing bylaw number 1810 of 2016 and the business regulation and licensing amendment <coughs> bylaw number 1910 of 2021. And we reviewed, discussed, revised uh, the draft proposed amendments for the City of Quinell Business Regulation and Licensing Bylaw, uh, number 1810 of 2016, and uh, the City of Quinell Business Regulation and Licensing Amendment Bylaw of 2019-10-21. And that was previously discussed at our September 16th meeting, so came back and uh, made some, had some discussions about the changes. And the recommendations there are currently none. And we also have a, our next meeting will be d November 4th, 2021 in the West, uh, at City Hall in the Fraser River Meeting Room. Thank you, that's it. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments uh, for the chair of that committee? Seeing none, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Runge. We'll move on to the CRD board highlights. Uh, you'll note uh, in the highlights, if you just scan them, I think it was one of the first meetings in a long time where really the municipal members didn't have a lot to do because it was primarily the work of electoral areas. And every once in a while we get these agendas uh, where you really you know, are participating and there's not a lot on there that uh, is with respect to our business. A couple of things I will point out that haven't been highlighted in here. Uh, coming forward into the Finance Committee meeting, which is coming up this week, Thursday, uh, there is a request to add uh, incremental emergency services uh, personnel because the EOC for the Caribou Regional District has been operative for the last uh, few years, almost the entire year, between flood and fire and so on, landslides, etc. Uh, and then the other is that there is a move being made to consolidate all of the economic development uh, functions into one caribou chocote and wide uh, function uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that evolves because currently uh, the area directors have had more say over that than a, a single uh, function and then you'll notice at the end of the actual board highlights director Massier is trying to resurrect uh, the uh, some of the lobbying around the highway 16 connector road uh, using this year's fires uh, out at Bowery 
Corrin uh, as a case in point of needing that additional access egress uh, road addressed. If you'll recall, there was a bridge deconstructed at one point that basically made it a non-starter. Well, that bridge, uh, for reasons, has been reconstructed. So we're back again to just a nominal amount of tidying up of, of a decommissioned for a portion uh, of the Forest Service Road uh, that needs to be tidied up. And then uh, the discussion about is it an all-year road, what's the maintenance, et cetera. So uh, Director Massey brought that forward to the board. And at some point, we may also uh, want to weigh in on that once we get a sense of where the government is at. So other than that, that's for information only. Any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we'll move on then to city staff report, starting off uh, with the business license regulation amendment bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is to request the first and second reading of the proposed city of Cornell business regulation licensing amendment bylaw 1910 of 21. Uh, the PAPCOM has reviewed the proposed amendment bylaw 1910 and recommend, also recommended council to provide first two readings. Uh, I will just uh, summarize the key amendments of the uh, amendment bylaw. Uh, we have basically uh, improved the language and made some changes in the language to improve understanding and for better interpretation. Uh, and the definitions of business, mobile business, and mobile vendors have been updated. Uh, and clarification of non-profit organizations within the city is also uh, added just right after the best definition of business. And lastly, uh, introduction of business license requirements for commercial landlords renting or leasing one or more residential and commercial properties within the city have been recommended in the amendment bylaw. This is mainly because uh, staff, had staff had concerns about the provisions in the current uh, six, section 6.5 of the bylaw that they are only applicable to the dwelling units and do not address the commercial landlords renting or leasing more than one property. And since commercial landlords generate income within the city by renting those properties, therefore these additional provision, provisions of business license requirements are introduced in the amendment bylaw 1910. And uh, I would also like to indicate there are a couple of errors in the amendment bylaw. Uh, first is uh, in section 6.5, explanatory note, the correct wording is four instead of five in both the sentences. And second one is uh, the, bylaw the bylaw heading is, is incorrect, it should be city of Cornell. Uh, uh, bylaw number 1910 or 21. With this, I would like to conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll deal with the actual amended bylaw when we get to the bylaw section. Uh, so the floor is open for discussion uh, with respect to the proposed changes uh, with a view to us doing the vote at the bylaw section. So, Councillor Paul. Yes, I'd, I'd just like to quickly go back to uh, my concern about um, using the business license bylaw as a revenue generator for bylaw enforcement and fire inspection, and why I believe that it should be uh, part of the package for taxation as opposed to being tacked on to a business license fee. And it is as follows, that if we so I'm, have a- I'm going to suggest, because that's the master fee bylaw, part, right? So if you can make your comments known, but you can also sit in when we have the conversations about the master fee bylaw as well. Yeah, I, I, so I don't have a problem. I, I don't, I'm not worried about the actual fee. I'm just concerned about the, 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 the source of funding, whether the, whether the funding for bylaw enforcement and fire inspection should come from, uh, from business license fees or through taxation. And I okay, I'm going to ask the city manager to weigh in because we have a piece of business in front of us uh, that's not uh, what you're trying to get us to engage in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and you're exactly correct. The fee bylaw is when we bring forward the licensing discussion. Uh, the quick little answer, though, to the question is that uh, taxation rates are the same for the whole business class. So there's one class six business rates. Some businesses attract more city services just to the nature of their business. And business licensing is one of the areas where we can can compensate for that and, and get some differential fees charged, which is why the city charges some differential fees for business licensing to make up for the fact that some businesses take more servicing. But that's a quick answer. Again, it's, that's not really on the agenda and it doesn't fit within this report framework. 
Yeah. So, Councillor Paul, I need you to stick to the business at hand on the agenda, and that's not part of the business at hand on the agenda. Well, where you're getting confused is that the finance committee gave an update on its deliberations. Uh, and you will actually see the result of those deliberations when the master fee bylaw comes forward. So okay, tonight so on this agenda, that is not a topic. I just want to clarify, to I am not confused, and I'll just make the point that a home-based business does not require a fire inspection. I'll leave it at that. Uh, anyway, uh, we will deal with that when we get to the at, that actual business. So on the business at hand uh, in front of us, questions or comments? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So we will receive the report and uh, accept the report as is. We will deal with the bylaw when we get to the bylaw section then. Okay, next business report, the community forest update from Manager Robinson. Great, thank you. Um, so the purpose of this report is to update Council on the community forest application process to date. Currently staff are working with our project partners, Lataco Diné, Nazco, Esdala, and Lacus Diné First Nations on identifying areas to include in our Community Forest Agreement or CFA application. A consultant has been hired to assist with area selection and the corresponding timber supply analysis required to ensure the areas chosen have the annual allowable cut over time. A management plan is also being drafted and will include management and governance structures, objectives, public engagement and reporting information. Area selection and developing a management plan are both requirements of the provincial CFA application process. And this is for information only, there's no recommendations. Thank you. We just wanted to keep you up to date because we've been keeping the chiefs up to date. I meet now with the four chiefs, Estela, Nazco, Luskus, and uh, Letaco. Uh, we met in October. I uh, gave them an update on where we are, we're at with the community force, gave them an opportunity to ask some questions, and I said to staff, we haven't done that with council for a little bit, uh, so we should update council as well as a partner uh, to this agreement. Uh, we're still having a little bit of of um, lack of clarity on the two different groups uh, that work uh, on this. So we have a technical working group that does all of the deep diving into the uh, technical aspects of land definition now and eventually management plan, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, for some of our First Nations partners, uh, they don't have the hard walls between uh, the elected council members and the workforce. Uh, as we do. So many of them serve dual roles uh, where they actually have a functional role within the First Nation as well as sit as a council and that's allowed by their bylaws and by their governance structure. That causes a little bit of confusion uh, among some of the chiefs about whether, what meetings they should be attending and how we report back. So I'm going to be meeting with Estela next week. Uh, to do some clarification around that. I did talk uh, with Chief Stump about that from NASCO's perspective, and we do want to try and find a way to keep the technical team a technical team working with the consultants, and then excuse me, and then report back up to the leadership uh, team uh, when decisions need to be made and when we have to actually formalize some of the recommendations. So other than that, uh, the process is uh, proceeding. Uh, there's a little bit of irony as on Thursday, we're making a presentation uh, to the BC uh, Federation and Community Forest Federation, uh, and I feel a little awkward making a presentation to people who've had community forests for a very long long time and we still don't have one yet, uh, but they want us to talk a little bit about that partnership that we have with First Nations because the theme uh, is reconciliation uh, and so we've got a bit of a unique uh, situation here that they want us to speak to. Any questions or comments for Manager Robinson, Any, anything on the community forest per se? Okay, seeing none, then back to you, Manager Robinson, on the community resiliency investment. Okay, thank you. So the purpose of this report is to bring to the attention of Council the 2022 Community Resilience Investment Program grant application 
So we are seeking $57,000 in CRI funding to further advance the city's wildfire preparedness on private property. The CRI grant will be used for education, rebates for homeowners, wildfire preparedness month, and further behavior change initiatives, working with plant nurseries, building supply stores, and um, other initiatives under this. May I read the recommendation? So the recommendation is that council, uh, sorry, that Quinell City Council supports the City of Quinell's grant application to the Union of BC Municipalities for the 2022 Community Resilience Investment Program to carry out Fire Smart Education and Outreach, Communications, the re and the Rebate Program as part of our Quinell and surrounding area Community Wildfire Protection Plan's private land strategy. On the recommendation, Councillor Elliott so moved, Councillor Runge second, and did you have a question there? Sometimes, Councillor Runge, when you put your hand up, you get that quizzical look on your face. I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's just a pure seconding. Okay, good. I'll uh, eventually read your body language in a third or fourth term, maybe. Um, so on that, first and second, any questions or comments? Okay, thank you. The, the question I have is, is CRI uh, is usually, isn't it 100,000 a year that is eligible for municipalities? So do we have another uh, grant application or utilization of the remainder? So it isn't just a given $100,000 per community, that's including fuel management costs as well. So when we did hit that $100,000 ask, we were also doing fuel management activities because we don't have any this year under that envelope. The total came to the 57,000. So it's an up to envelope, not a, you know, here's your $100,000 check, what are you gonna do with it? Okay, all right, good. Okay, seeing no further questions on the motion, all those in favor? Any opposed, carried. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction to the next one to contextualize it. Uh, and so this is really a ruse to get Lacey up here uh, so that we can say that we're sad that she's going to be leaving us. That's all this is. You don't have to actually do the report. Uh, it was just to get you to come up. So uh, Lacey has a very exciting new job that she's going to be moving into in her field of expertise. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you've done a yeoman's job for us in getting a foundation uh, for the manufacturing side, plus assisting Aaron with all of the other work that's been done, so very much appreciated. Um, but uh, uh, council uh, hasn't been told that up until this point, so that's uh, news for council members. Uh, with respect to the actual report Lacey's bringing forward today, this is the culmination of a lot of work that Lacey's been working on, and I'm not sure that council fully apprised of all of the activities that are occurring through our Forestry Innovation Center. Uh, we have become uh, a known entity uh, for uh, research from the landscape level through the manufacturing. Uh, we've had, uh, you saw the report uh, uh, with the Masters in International Forestry, second year here. They're using us as a, a place uh, for people to come and see what uh, can uh, be done. Uh, we have had uh, another group on uh, Friday of researchers coming through with respect to mountain pine beetle risk mitigation. I just got an email on the weekend, uh, the SFU Center for Dialogue, their WAS Center for Dialogue, downtown Vancouver is going to be embarking on a long-term uh, dialogue around wildfire prevention, management, mitigation, and community engagement, including First Nations. And they were told um, by a former UBCM president to reach out to us first before they even started uh, to have the conversation with anybody else. Uh, so uh, we're going to be engaging them next week. One side of the work that we're doing is to ask the question, if we change the dynamic on the land base, so if we can move forest management away from pure timber management to ecosystem resiliency and to manage against these large-scale disturbances that we're so susceptible to, pest, disease, fire, uh, and then things like the floods because the hydrology is changing, what can you do on the economic side? So how can you help to drive a reinvention on the manufacturing side? 
And one of the reasons we've embarked on this as part of our think tank process is because most businesses, when they're in the middle of their business, and particularly a pandemic, supply chain issues, everything else, they're busy focused on maintaining their businesses and maintaining competitive advantage of their business. They're not really necessarily in a position to lift their heads up and do the kind of scan uh, that is done more from a research base. So Lacey's been working uh, with a team on a number of fronts. This is only one uh, of the fronts, uh, but uh, working with a team to look at manufacturing options and opportunities to equip us to have different conversations with investors and to have different conversations with our existing industry. Uh, and so we are not, we've been kind of challenged why is the city involved in what is pure business? We've been kind of challenged around that. Well, the reason for that is, is if we know where the innovation could and should be, we're in a better position to try and drive it uh, in, that, in that direction. And to that point, we've had some discussions recently that I'm going to take down to my minister meetings in November around some opportunities that we actually have in Quinnell that if we're positioned right, uh, we can take advantage of because we understand it in some regards better uh, than our industry partners may understand it at this point. But eventually, it's going to come back to council because we still do have tools, Section 226, you know, various partnership arrange arrangements, and eventually we're going to be become a fiber supplier uh, into that mix uh, when we get the community forest license. So this work on what are the possibilities and opportunities on the manufacturing side is a fundamental part of our whole think tank process. So Lacey, over to you to kind of give a snapshot that you've got here of where our thinking is at this point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the purpose of the report is to have Council receive the Forestry Manufacturing Analysis Summary for an update on work to date. The Forestry Manufacturing Analysis Summary lists the guiding recommendations, reports completed to date, scope of work, best bets, and next steps. The guiding recommendations come from the future forestry think tank sessions in 2018 and 2017, 19, 2019 to optimize fiber recovery and utilization, realize more value and reduce costs, assess the market demand for future forest products, secure investments that diversify the manufacturing hub, and to expand training, education and research at the North Caribou campus to support all these changes. Five reports have been done to date, ranging from solid wood product opportunities to bioproducts, digging deeper into a biomass inventory for two of our local First Nations, and finally, using uh, local interviews with key stakeholders to identify and rank best bet opportunities for the region. Best bets that have been identified include district energy and combined heat and power for First Nations, acting as a regional forestry management pilot, expanding on secondary manufacturing opportunities, renewable natural gas or RNG plant, bio crude plant, and a training center for trades and careers in forestry. We have a number of next steps outlined uh, for some of these initiatives. Uh, the ones listed here are the ones that are more pertinent to the city and council that can play in. And um, we are working on road mapping all these next steps. You'll probably be hearing more about those future meetings. That's it. Great, thank you. And, and again, um, in our request for minister meetings, we actually have now a um, ministerial assistant, I believe, uh, reaching out uh, to talk to staff in advance of me meeting uh, with Minister Ralston around our district energy heating and net zero aspirations. Um, so he's getting briefed up so he can brief the minister or advance uh, to my conversation. And I was chatting with somebody today, and of course we have somebody in our gallery today that knows uh, that whole issue around net zero, passive housing, etc. As we look at some of the large scale potential projects we've got, whether they're housing or institutional, we're positioning ourselves to understand that aspect of development uh, in a different way, I believe. So, any questions or comments uh, for Lacey or uh, on the uh, report or otherwise? Okay. You're getting off easy. Okay. So again, go ahead. No, you're good. 
but I just want to thank you for all the work and you know should that you know other career aspiration not work you know that we can hopefully re reintegrate you into our system here thank you no I told her I've already cut her out of my will and I'm not talking to her anymore so she's done uh, she actually said to me what was it yesterday morning are you actually talking to me or not talking to me right so uh, but uh, we wish you all the best Lacey thank you and thanks for your report tonight okay all right, then uh, moving on to our next one, uh, the uh, Director Turner on the Eagle uh, Home Hardware. Thank you, Mayor. The subject of this report is the commercial development permit for a proposed storage shed that exceeds height requirements. The review uh, reviews the site design uh, for the storage shed in the commercial development permit area and also requires the variance to, maximize, to, max, to the maximum height uh, for an accessory building. Um, just a quick, quick couple of points uh, with regards to the proposal. The applicant Eagle Home Building Center is proposing to construct an eight meter tall enclosed accessory building along the rear lot of 172 Reed Street. The accessory building will replace the existing storage racks uh, and the facade is to match the existing Eagle Home hardware building to create symmetry. Uh, there is a picture that uh, of uh, the lot and, and the angle of view that you currently get which shows the uh, number of items that are stored outside so we do uh, think that this is going to be an improve, improvement to the area. The uh, um, there is no landscaping um, provided with this. The the building will take up the entire area of which uh, of which is going to be developed for this, um, and uh, the but they are matching the color scheme with the existing color scheme of the uh, of the of the commercial enterprise. So um, well, the staff is recommending that council approve DP 20, 2135 for the construction of an eight meter tall accessory building on lot four, block ten. Town of Quinnell, Plan 17,000, and not Lot 5, Block 10, Town of Quinnell, Plan 17,000, except the north 50 feet as proposed on the attached plans. On the recommendation, Councillor Vic, so moved. Councillor Paul, second. Any questions or comments? Okay. I, I think not only from the visual perspective, but I know lots of builders will be happy that some of the materials in there are under full cover uh, as opposed to exposed to the weather as well. So moving in this direction from a product uh, perspective, I think is the right thing to do too. So. Nice for staff. Yeah, and nice for staff as well. Any further questions or comments on this? So on the recommendation, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Okay, next report, Director Turner on uh, the Highway 97 Icon Homes. Thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this report is to consider the site design for a temporary mobile home show along Highway 97 North in the commercial development permit area. The proposal is for Icon Homes, who's proposing uh, to temporarily site this 14-foot uh, by 60-foot mobile home on the lot um, to display mobile ho show homes uh, and allow periodic servicing renovation of up to two trailers uh, for short durations on the lot. The mobile homes are part, this is part of a, uh, an initiative that Icon Homes is taking on with respect to looking at sites and um, um, trying to uh, market the mobile homes, especially for some areas in the West Quinnell Land Stability Study area that are trying to move to uh, mobile homes to fill up some of the vacant lots that have sat up there for, for a number of years, the surfaced vacant lots. Um, the applicant has noted that there is room for parking in this area um, to accommodate individuals that will be going to the show home. Uh, the Icon Homes also notes that this is a temporary for one year period. This is a lease to test this venture. Um, after that time, they uh, intend to come back to council, and, I, and I've extended it for a little longer than the year. I'm saying up to two years. After, after the year, then give some time to actually develop a plan for the full site um, and uh, uh, come back to council if they decide to proceed uh, uh, but with purchasing this lot and doing a, a permanent venture on this lot. Um. Uh, Icon um, Homes feels that this would be, uh, if this becomes a successful venture, they are letting us know that they will come back with a full development plan for, for Council's review at that time. Is there any questions? The only question I have is on the rendering is the single wide and if it's connected to West Quinnell infill development, we have stipulations there with respect to width. Um, and so I'm wondering, I'm not saying that it has to be a double wide there, but I'm wondering if there's going to be clarity of uh, expectations with respect to West Quinnell. 
Thank you. And I should say that I, I, I'm sure that uh, this is for uh, this is not just for the West Quinnell area, but it is to give. Um, uh, yes, we will ensure that they have that to hand out. That's a great point, Mayor. Um, there's also going to be other uh, design features that are not necessarily going to be displayed here. That must be that must occur in uh, West Quinnell. Um, and, and I can tell you that uh, uh, Icon Homes is very well aware of all of those features. But we can also give them some materials. Yeah, I think it's just a it's a portal for us for people who are interested in if we can equip uh, Joe with our information and so that he's not having to do our job for us where it's it's easy it's you can they can grab it and then if that's what they want to do they can work uh, with a proponent on that so other than that I think this is a, a good proposal so uh, Councillor Paul Really? Yeah. The motion or something else? No, just kidding. The, the, the mayor, mayor, one yeah, additional yeah. comment. Although we don't have plans to bring rent this time, I should note that this is a very large site, and uh, the applicant is, you know, trying to figure out how to uh, uh, divide up the site and and and, and use utilize it. Um, and so um, uh, we may be coming back uh, at a future time um, to review other uses on the site. Sure. Okay, Councillor Paul, so moved, uh, seconded. Councillor Vick, any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, uh, and then the annual meeting schedule. Administrator Hartley. You see, I'm not saying deputy corporate administrator every time, like it's just wrong and it's not a great acronym either. So Ms. Hartley, uh, please. Attached is the 2022 Annual Regular Council Meeting Schedule for Council Review and Approval. Okay, uh, and I think we need to get everybody clear how close these mics have to be so that uh, we are being heard. We had that same issue with the CRD because the pickup is a little bit tight. So uh, so on the meeting schedule then, a uh, recommendation to adopt. Uh, Councillor uh, Elliott, so move. Councillor Paul, second. Any questions or comments? Question? Yeah, the July 26th and the August 16th meetings, are they going to be as per past practice? Okay, thank you. Yeah, we post the schedule and then we also have the opportunity to not hold meetings, uh, right? So, Councillor, or sorry, City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it should also be noted that we may go the other way as well. There may be meetings that we need to hold that aren't on the list depending how a budget process goes or other issues come up, development type issues, and, and that's standard, been standard practice in the past as well. Yeah, and we pared down our meeting, our regular posted meeting schedule in order to accommodate that, so. Okay, so on the motion, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Uh, council information package is uh, as it is there, and so now we're going to go to uh, the bylaws. So, City of Cornell 2020 to 2023 tax exempting amendment bylaw, final adoption. Councillor Elliott so moved, seconded. Councillor Vic, questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Goulet, do you want to recuse yourself for this next one? Okay. Okay, uh, so with respect to the City of Cornell Zoning Amendment Bylaw, Tillicum Society third reading, uh, it was a uh, public hearing today. Yep. Councillor Elliott, so moved. Councillor Vick, second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, with respect to bylaw 1910, City of Cornell Business Regulation Licensing Amendment Bylaw, uh, please recall uh, that on page 39, section 6.5, uh, it will read four residential rental units, and on page 21, uh, the uh, naming uh, of the bylaw uh, has been uh, changed. So uh, with that in mind, so moved. Councillor Goulet moved, seconded. Councillor Elliott, questions or comments? Councillor Paul. Mr. Mayor, I hope that this is the correct time for me to ask these questions. Um, with regard to um, page 27 of 95, I'm, I'm into the bylaw itself. Um, under a definition of business, um, it's talking about uh, business has the same me meaning as defined in the community charter as amended from time to time. This also includes nonprofit organizations conducting commercial acti activities within the city. <clears throat> My question is, does this affect uh, Billy Barker days, Quinnell Performing Arts, the rodeo, etc.? So for clarification, Councillor Paul, and I'm happy to get into the bylaw, but for clarification, that's why we do a report. So the report gives council the opportunity to dig into the bylaw without distracting from the vote on the bylaw. Right. With respect, Mr. So, Mayor, I tried to bring this up under the report. No, you didn't. You were talking about finances. You were talking about the master fee bylaw. So we will deal with your questions just now. Okay. But that's the whole point of I the understand. report. Thank okay. you. Uh, Director Bolton. Yes, it's not intended to get those kinds of nonprofits. What we're intending to, it's for nonprofits to compete against other commercial businesses, so such as daycares. There's quite a few nonprofit daycares versus commercial daycares. So it's just to put them all on an even playing field that they all require business licenses. Thank you. Question number two from uh, page <clears throat> 38 of 95, um, paragraph three. Um, I, I submit that the that the wording is a little awkward. It says, at multi-vendor events, not including mi mid midways, mobile vendors are not required to obtain a business license. And so, if you take a, an event such as um, West Coast Amusements or uh, Shooting Star am Amusements at Billy Barker Days, does that mean that each individual uh, vendor, and these vendors are all under contract to the various um, midways, are they required to obtain a separate business license? So that's exactly what this is saying, does not have to happen. Okay, I, I, I hope that's right. Sorry, what's going on? The, Sorry, for, for that I, I'm just watching some body language here. What's going on? For that specific event, I believe that's what happens. They don't do it for the... Um, for, for Billy Barker days, it's all under one license. Yeah, so the, the intent of this is where you have an entity that can aggregate the individual businesses operating under that entity, then that we only are concerned about the one entity, not all the individual entities. Is so in correct? other words, yeah. Just one second, I want to get clarification. Yeah. Director Bowen. Sorry, there is a separate section that re relates to Midway, so the Midway itself so the has to have its own license. Thank you. So yeah. if I understand this correctly, let's use West Coast Amusements as an example. They were here recently. They have one business license, and all of their sub-operators and the games and the concessions are all covered under that blanket license. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And finally, on page 41 of 95, and this has to do with traveling shows. There, I note that there's no definition for traveling shows in the definition section, but I have to wonder about um, such things as um, entertainers that come into the senior center, to the legion, to the schools, uh, maybe at the Quinell Rodeo. These are um, entertain entertainers that are in the business of, of performing. And I would also ask the question that, are they going to re be required to pay the or to have the five million dollar comprehensive liability coverage as well? Director Bolton, I would not imagine so because they've got a host organization. But Director Bolton, no, the intent is to cover risk, so it would be events that re that have risk, right? So a uh, entertainer in a school or something like that is not going to have that type of risk. But if they are earning income in the city of Cornell, then they should be getting a business license. 
Okay, so that begs another question. If, if, a, if an entertainer comes into, uh, let's say, the Occidental, um, Occidental isn't affiliated with any kind of a non-profit organization, is that entertainer, it might be a singer or whatever, required to A, buy a business license, and B, show proof of $5 million of uh, comprehensive liability insurance? Director Bowen. Those are good questions. We have not, we have not specifically had entertainers in the Occidental, to my knowledge, ever get a business license uh, to this point. No, my my presumption would be that the business license is held with the Occidental, and the liability is held with the Occidental. If Cornell Live Arts is putting on a show, the liability rests with them, and the ability to operate rests with them. So, uh, you know, I think that these are, are questions that, you know, uh, should have been asked in the report, quite frankly, uh, because we're now in the vote on the bylaw. So, in the future, Council Paul, just so we're clear. Our standard practice, all bylaws come with a report uh, on first reading. The substantive dialogue for the bylaws in the report so that we clean the bylaw section up as the voting uh, section, okay? So uh, with respect to this, uh, remind me now because I've lost track of we've got a mover and seconder. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Goulet, Councillor Elliott. Any further discussion or dialogue on this? All in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, no changes to upcoming meeting schedules or changes to committee appointments. Any announcements of future events? Okay, seeing none from Council. Just a, a heads up, Council. Our next meeting is the week of November 2nd. It's on November, or the week of November 1st. It's on November 2nd. I will be heading to Victoria. Uh, it looks like we're up uh, to maybe a dozen or, or more uh, minister meetings, uh, including a meeting with the Premier. Um, over the next two weeks, we'll be putting the briefing documents uh, together for the various ministers. Uh, and because we didn't have UBC, for the last couple of years, etc. I will be making those briefing documents available to council members so you can see uh, what the topics are that we're uh, addressing with each of the ministers. With each minister, because many of them will play multiple roles on Treasury Board and uh, on some of their strategic initiatives, etc., there are two uh, initiatives that I will be canvassing every minister with. One is around the interconnector project uh, because that has Treasury board implications and we also need them to understand it strategically and then the other is some of the work we're doing on the forestry initiatives uh, particularly with the ability for the province because there's lots of thinking being done uh, within the NDP government around the future of forestry but one of the positions that we're taking is that they're always thinking of it at the provincial scale and to try and address forestry at the provincial scale is why I would argue it's always failed uh, because there is no provincial scale for forestry either on the landscape level, manufacturing level, the circumstances in each community, etc. So I want all of the ministers to be aware that as they discuss the future, wildfires, forest management, forest health, carbon neutral, net neutral communities, uh, the future of the forest industry, mass timber or lignin extraction, that we're in a position to offer that scale level ability to experiment. Uh, because we have, as we've said in our think tank process, the ability to look at the landscape from a rehabilitation perspective and then look at revitalizing the forest sector because we still have all of the pieces of the forest sector here, panels, pulp, uh, solid wood, etc. So those two I'll be making, uh, leaving the briefing package with every minister I go to and then each of the ministers, of course, I have uh, their separate agenda items. So you'll see those starting to come uh, very shortly here as we put the briefing packages together. Uh, but as a consequence, Councillor Elliott will be at the helm uh, for the November 2nd meeting. Anything else from Council? Okay, gallery questions? The masked bandits in the back there? You... Okay, no gallery questions. I would invite a motion to adjourn. Councillor Runge so moved. Councillor Mitch second. Any questions or comments? All in favor of adjournment? Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks, staff.